Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the Kirchhoff Slavs. There are two types of Kirchhoff Slavs are there. Kirchhoff Slavs are classified into two types. Kirchhoff's current law and the Kirchhoff's voltage law. This Kirchhoff's current law is also called as Kirchhoff's first law. And this Kirchhoff's voltage law is also called as Kirchhoff's second law. Now, today we are going to discuss about the Kirchhoff's current law, KCL. Kirchhoff's current law, we can also call it as KCL. And Kirchhoff's voltage law, we can also call it as KVL. So, if you see the statement of the KCL, Kirchhoff's current law, that is the first law, states that the current flowing into the node or the junction must be equal to the current flowing out of the node. That is, sum of the currents entering into the node is equal to sum of the currents leaving the node. If you see the tree diagram, assume that this is a node, node or junction. So, junction is nothing but two or more branches are meeting at one point. Okay, for this junction, there are, for this node, there are total five branches. Out of five branches, current one, two, three are entering into the node and the currents four and five are leaving from the node. So, if you observe here, I1 current is entering, I2 current is entering, I3 current is entering and the current 4 and 5 are leaving. So, from this we can say that I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to the I4 plus I5. If we write the equation, we will get sum of the entering currents are equal to the I1 plus I2 plus I3 that is and minus I4 and minus I5 because I4 and I5 currents are leaving. If you simplify the above equation, we will get I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to I4 plus I5. Here, I1 plus I2 plus I3 are the entering currents and I4 and I5 are the leaving currents. So, from this we can say that sum of the entering currents is equal to the sum of the leaving currents. This is the statement of the Kirchhoff's current law, KCL. If you see the diagram, from this diagram we can write the KCL equation. So, you assume that it is the node. Okay, from for this node, as you see here, if you look at this node, I1 current is entering and I2 current is leaving from the node and I3 current is leaving from the node. Okay, only I1 current is entering and I2 and I3 are leaving. So, if we, uh, we know the uh, statement that currents entering the node is equal to currents leaving the node. So, if we apply that form, uh, that statement for the circuit, we will get I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. See here, I1 current is entering into the node and I2 and I3 are leaving from the node. So, I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. So, this is a, a KCL statement or we can also write it as I1 minus I2 minus I3 is equal to 0. So, if you take I2 and I3 to the left hand side, we will get I1 minus I2 minus I3 is equal to 0. So, this is about the KCL statement. So, simply uh, we can say that sum of the currents entering into the node is equal to sum of the currents leaving. Okay. Now, we will take one uh, small problem and by using that problem, now we will verify whether the KCL is verified or not for that particular circuit. Now, verification of KCL. So, this is a circuit I am taking. Okay. In this circuit, so, yeah, there are three resistors, 7 ohm, 9 ohm and 8 ohms and there is one voltage source. The value of the voltage source is 5 volts and I am taking only one source in this circuit. Okay, assume that I1 current is entering and I2 and I3 currents are leaving. Okay, you can also assume in your own directions. Okay, we can take the directions in our, in our own. Okay, that is randomly we can take. But according to the direction only, we have to write the uh, we have to apply the equation. Okay, here to find the 
I1, first we need to find out I1 value and I2 value and I3 value. Okay, so here to find the I1 value, I1 value is nothing but the total current here. So, but after this node, the current, this total current I1, after this node, it is dividing into two parts, I2 and I3. So, that's why I1 is called as a total current. So, we need to find out the total current first. After finding the total current, we have to find out I2 and I3. So, here, the formula for total current I1 is equal to total voltage by total resistance. Total voltage, we know that is 5 volts. We need to find out the total resistance R. To find the re to total resistance R, we have to reduce the total circuit here. So, observe the circuit. 8 ohms and 9 ohms are connected in parallel. So, why, they are, why these two are connected in parallel? Because here current is dividing. Okay, that's why 8 ohms and 9 ohms are connected in parallel. If, we, if 8 and 9 ohms are connected in parallel, what is the formula for parallel connection? 8 into 9 by 8 plus 9. Okay, if we apply that uh, formula here, 8 into 9 by 8 plus 9, we will get 4.23 ohms of resistance. If both are connected in parallel, we will get 4.23 ohms. Now, replace this 8 ohms and 9 ohms by 4.23 ohms. Remove these two resistors and connect one resistor. That resistor value is 4.23 ohms. If we redraw the diagram, here 5 ohm, 5 ohm voltage source, 5 sorry, 5 volt voltage source and 7 ohm in as it is, 7 ohm resistor is as it is and 8 ohm and 9 ohm, I am removing the 8 ohm and 9 ohm, I am taking one more resistor, that value of the resistor is 4.23 ohms. Now, if you observe the circuit, 7 ohm and 4.23 ohms are connected in series. So, what is the formula for series when two resistors are connected in series R1 plus R2? Okay, here 7 ohm and 4.23 ohms are connected in series. The formula for series connection is R1 plus R2, that is 7 plus 4.23 is equal to 11.23 ohms. So, total resistance value is 11.23 ohms. If you up, uh, substitute this R value in the above formula, we will get R is equal to 11.23. In the next step, we will substitute this R value, total resistance 11.23 in the this formula. I1 is equal to V by R. Next, we will see, if we apply these values in the formula, we will get I1 is equal to total voltage is equal to 5 volts and the total resistance we got 11.23 ohms. If we calculate this value, above value, we will get I1 is equal to 0 0.44 amperes. This is the total current value. Now we have to calculate I2 value and I3 value. If we take the I, how we will calculate I2 and I3, here the current is dividing. So that's why, and there is only one source. So here we can apply the current division rule. So I am applying current division rule. You can apply any of the method. Okay, well, I am I'm calculating the I1 value by using the Ohm's law and by using I2 value and I3 value by using current division rule. So if you if you don't want to do all these things and if you want to use by using mesh analysis or nodal analysis, you can use, okay, I1 and I2 and I3 values, you can find out by using mesh analysis or nodal analysis, that is your wish, okay. Here, I am using the current division rule here. Color, current division rule by using the current division rule. What is the formula for current division rule? Total current. Current division. I am finding the current passing through the 9 ohm resistor. <clears throat> okay. Which current is flowing through the 9 ohm resistor? I2. I2 is equal to total current. Total current is 0 0.44 amperes. Total current into opposite resistance of this 9 ohm is A2. Opposite resistance divided by sum of the two resistors, 8 plus 9 ohm. These are the two resistors. If we calculate the uh, value, above value, we will get 0 0.207 amperes. We will get the formula is 
total current into opposite resistance by sum of the resistors. For this 9 ohm, opposite resistance is 8 ohms and divided by sum of all the resistors. I2 value is equal to 0 0.207 amperes. Now, if we, if we want to calculate the I3 value, then we will get total current is 0 0.44 amperes into the opposite resistance of this 8 ohm resistor is 9 ohm. Opposite resistance 9 ohm divided by sum of all the resistors. These dividing resistors are 8.9. Okay. If we calculate the above value, we will get 0 0.232 amperes. So here I1 value we got 0 0.44 amperes by using the simple ohms law. And I2 value is 0 0.207 amperes by using current division rule. And I3 value 0 0.232 by using the current division rule. So these are the values we got just now. So according to KCL, what is the formula? Sum of the currents entering is equal to I1. And sum of the currents leaving are I2 plus I3. So if we apply the all the values in the equation, we will get 0 0.44 is equal to I1 value and I2 value is equal to 0 0.207 plus I3 value is 0 0.232. Now, if we calculate the above equation, we will get 0 0.44 is equal to 0 0.44. Hence, we can say that KCL is verified for the above circuit. Okay, sum of the currents entering is equal to sum of the currents leaving. Okay, entering currents is equal to 0 0.44 and if we combine the all the leaving currents, it is also 0 0.44. Both are equal. From this, we can say that KCL is verified. Okay, like this, we will verify the Kirchhoff's current law. Okay, for the any circuit, sum of the currents entering into the node must be equal to sum of the currents leaving the node. If this condition is not satisfied, that is not a valid circuit. Okay, like this, we will verify the Kirchhoff's current law. In the next class, we will see the Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay, thank you everyone.